Hey there fellow KX500 owners. My name is Clark and um, I was just doing a rebuild on my bike and it had been long enough that I didn't know when I did it last and it was long enough that when I opened it up it was bad news inside. Uh, really really carbon uh, up and to the point that nothing even looked familiar to me. So um, I was looking online for how to do the exhaust valves. There's really nothing there. The climber manual is horrible. So I thought I would just take a few minutes here and um, if it's been a while for you, this could be a refresher. If you've never done it before, hopefully this video will help you through because like I said, what you can find in print is absolutely horrible and pretty confusing. So this is off of a 2001. Uh, I've got a 1993. They're the same. I think 88, 89 is where things changed. So if you've got um, 1990 or newer, um, it should be the, identical to what I'm going to show you here today. So it should be easy to go along with it. So obviously my barrel is, is off of the bike. Um, and I will run you through this. Above the exhaust, you have a inspection plate with two bolts holding it on. You will take those two bolts off. Inside of that, there'll be two more bolts. And if you're using a nice set of, of uh, sockets like Snap-on or Craftsman, they're going to have a nice thick wall to them. They're not going to fit. So hopefully once in a while you go to Big Lots or Harbor Freight and you get some cheap stuff and they're going to have a real thin wall socket and that's what you're going to need to fit this. If you don't have an 8mm, 5 sixteenths will work. So I'll just take this out the rest of the way. And that bolt is out and now you can see we've got the power valve that is loose here. So uh, a little more terminology. Up here on top we have the valve guides and I've got mine not seated all the way so that they come out easily. When they're fresh off the bike they're pretty well stuck in there kind of hard. The soft aluminum you don't want to put a screwdriver in here and dig them up or anything. You can lift up on the power valve from the inside on the drum and get some perhaps leverage to be able to pick these things up to at least get them started. So let me take these. These two are, are identical. You can interchange them. Not a big deal. And then this is the idler gear and this guy has a little cutaway and that comes off and that just fit. It nested in there for that. At this point we also have to take the screw that's holding this rack, this shaft in here. So I'll just take this out the rest of the way. And you're going to want to pull that out, but you can't quite do it yet. Inside, looking down in here, you will see that on top of the gear we've got a little dot, and that's our index point. And if you turn that so that it's facing the front, you'll be able to lift this up. And we can do the same thing on the other side. So lifting these up and put some pressure on it, they'll stay up. Now you can take your shaft and pull this out completely. And now this drum will come out and this drum will come out. So this is what I, when I reached in there, I had my finger, finger underneath here to lift this up. These are marked. You have a little tiny little uh, line up here. That is the right side. The right side would be the side with the two, two gear holes, if you will. Okay. Now the actual exhaust valve, mine was so carboned up, I couldn't even see there was a hinge in here but you can help get it started by sticking your finger in there. Yours may be completely frozen. Wiggle it around and you can get this thing out of here. Okay, so the way this works is you have an inclined plane and, and the books refer to this as an exhaust valve and it is, but it's confusing when you talk about this exhaust valve. So I'm gonna call this a drum for the time being. And when this is in the bike, this is dropping down on there and then you've got this inclined plane so as this turns you've got this guy riding and that's kind of hard to do sitting here hold it but that's that's how that works okay so once you've got this out decarbonized i sandblasted mine i slant sandblasted this so it's nice and clean everything's loose everything's good you're going to make sure that it's not loose doesn't look like the pin's going to break away or anything else like that so once you've got all this cleaned up you're ready to put it back together so here's where it gets confusing in the book, but it's actually pretty simple. We've got to hold this guy, got to get it in here. And we're going to drop, uh, it wants, 
to fold up. I would drop that guy in there and we just let that fall down. That's done. Now we're going to take our left drum exhaust, which is the one without the line. We're going to see our index mark here. We're going to have that pointing to the front and it's going to drop in all the way. So what we've done when I was showing you before how it fits in that, that inclined plane, that is now dropped over that little piece of the valve. It's, it's, it's sitting in there. What we want to do is to turn this to the right a little bit and you might have to give it some encouragement to get it started. And if you look in here now, we've got our index mark, not, not perfectly perpendicular here, but it's going to be pointed just a little bit, a little bit, let me turn it some, kind of that direction in a, in a straight line that way. Okay. So again, when you have the dot, when you have the index mark pointed to the front, that allows this slot to drop over the pin on the primary exhaust valve. Boom, you're in. Okay, so we take our rack and it has a groove here. We we'll want to take notice of that groove. You can't slide it in while these drums are down. So we're very carefully, I want to get this one started too, so I'm going to turn it the other way. And carefully, we're going to lift these up. And you can see down below here, I'm really lifting up this exhaust valve, but I don't want it to come out of these drums. And if I'm high enough, which I am, and I'm going to push this bushing in on the side and push the rack all the way in. And you can let go of the one on the right. It doesn't matter right now. Now on this one on the left, we're going to keep our point here and we're going to lower this down. And if I've done it properly, it's one tooth. Here's the groove that was in the um, rack and we're a tooth away, but the, this index point, again, it's pointing this way, okay? This one, we, it turns freely because it's, there's no teeth on the rack. The teeth are gonna hit the idler gear. So this one, we want the same angle on our index mark. We want it to point basically kind of that same angle. So they're not quite straight across, just a little off to the side. And I'm gonna just lift this up and as I lift this, I'm lifting the whole power valve, so I know I know I've, I got that pin in our in our inclined plane, so we're good. So at this point, it's going to be the short end of the shaft, and we're going to put this in here. If it doesn't want to go in, look at the rack and make sure your teeth are lined up on that. But if it's in, it's going to be flush. The two gears will be flush. You'll take your little cutout guy here and line that up. I'm not going to jam these in all the way. I'm just going to put them in far enough that they, they kind of stick. Okay, and now our power valve moves in and out. So here's the fun part. When you look into the cylinder, this is in all the way. And I can't get my finger in here, but this is flush. Okay, that valve would be flush with, with the actual cylinder lining right now. At full throttle, this, this is going to come out. I just did that, but now it's correct. Okay, I'm getting myself in trouble here. I'm going to put this in. At low RPM, the valve is up. And at low RPM, this rod is in. So right now, we can see that our power valve is higher than the cylinder cutaway. When I pull the rod out, which is going towards open throttle, because this thing isn't completely screwed down, we've got some movement here. But that now is flush with your cylinder. Now, also in here, we've got two ports. We've got this guy here and this guy here. These are basically transfer ports for the exhaust, and they're on the other side as well. When we look inside the cylinder, right now we're at full throttle, so to speak. And we can see back here those transfer ports. We've got one there and another one there. Okay, so when we shut the throttle off, our drum is turning and we are closing off those transfer ports. Okay, now we're at low to no throttle at all. The exhaust is only coming through here and we've got a nice straight, there's no rough edges here. This is how you can tell if you've got all your teeth in the right place on the gear and if your drums are lined up. You've got perfectly smooth here and if you go the other way, now it's smooth coming out this way. Okay, so that's all there is to it. And then with this extended, 
you'll put your screw back in to make sure this guy is pushed in. And the other thing I didn't mention, when you put this together, you're going to put some grease, high temperature grease, a little bit around that O-ring. You're going to put it around the pin on the bottom where it's resting inside there. And you're going to run it around these guys on the valve seat. And you're going to put some grease on that rack because that's got the movement of the gears going back and forth. And that would do it. You'd put your two screws in here, your gasket, your plate, that screws in there, and you are good to go. So that's it. I hope that helps. I was driving myself crazy looking at that climber manual because it, it's uh, incorrect. So happy riding and um, look for more videos on how-tos on the KX500. Thanks for watching.